Welcome, I'm Linda Westfall. I'm going to be showing you today how I made this desktop calendar. I started by creating a calendar in an Excel program and then I printed it off on Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. For all of the months I have created a mask out of Eclipse masking paper and I will place that over the day part of the calendar. And I started off with January. And January's month is a carnation. And I started by blending distress inks around the outside. The colors I used are mustard seed, ripe persimmon, abandoned coral, and carved pumpkin. First, I placed the colors where I want them around the outside and then go back in and fill in and darken up the colors as I go. I'm going to create the carnation look by doing a water bleaching with Alta News Remember This stamp set. I used a water bottle to spritz the stamp with uh, one or two spritzes of water and then closed the misty door then opened it and wiped off the excess water and then repeated if I thought it needed to be a more bleached out look. And I repeated this moving the stamps around the calendar page as I went. Once that was completed and I let it dry, I used a Faber-Castell artist pit pen and added in details around to make it look more like carnations. Because I had used water to create the water bleaching, uh, it warped the page a little bit, so I ran it through my die cutting machine, sandwiched between a couple pieces of paper, and that made the clips masking paper really stick. So luckily I was able to get it all the way off, but it was a challenge. For the second month that I'm showing you, it's March, and March's flower is a daffodil and I used Altenew's Golden Garden stamp set to create this month's. I used a mini blending tool and Desert Night Crisp Dye Ink from Altenew to blend the ink over the panel. Once that was completed, I laid out the stamps in my Misty, prepped it with an anti-static powder tool, and stamped it with Versamark ink. Then I sprinkled gold embossing powder over it and tapped off the excess and then used my heat gun to heat set it. I removed the mask and then used Prismacolor colored pencils in a blue and a white to add details to the images that were stamped around the panel. I also used an eraser pencil to help blend the pencils. The next month I will be doing will be April, but I lost the footage of most of it. I used Life is Awesome stamp set by Altenew. I used the basic layering stamping technique to stamp that in frayed leaf, forest glade, frosty pink, coral berry, and heartbeat. April's flower is sweet pea. For May, I am going to be using Altenew's Build a Flower Carnation stamp set. And I started off using uh, VersaFine ink and then realized I was going to be Copic coloring in, so I changed to Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I stamped the small image from the stamp set around the panel and used the small leaf image to complete so there was no empty spaces. I used Y02, V15, and YG03. I filled in some of the flower and leaves around the panel. Then I used uh, C1, C3, and C5 to create a shadow around to make the day area stand out. And Mayflower is a hawthorn. Then I blended them all using N1. 
For June, I used the Altenew Painted Rose Stamp Set and did a technique from Beautiful Detail Classes from Altenew to help me create this loose artistic impression of a honeysuckle flower. I used a Spectrum Noir sparkle pen in rose quartz to create the first layer of the flower using first and second and sometimes third generation stamping to create the flowers. I added leaf details in with a stamp and write marker in pear pizzazz and then finally I added in more details for the flowers in a crisp cantaloupe stamp and write marker. And finally, I added some of the Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pen directly to the paper. July is a Larkspur, and I started off by blending in Silverstone, Industrial Diamond, and Limestone, I believe, on a panel. And I will be using the Best Mom Stamp Set to stamp the image after I have ink blended the panel. I will get my stamp ready and then prep my paper with an anti-static powder tool, stamp it, then add the embossing powder, and then I'll go back in before I heat set it all to make sure I have all the around stamped. I'm going to add color in on this panel by using a sponge and just getting color off of the ink pad with the sponge and then applying it to the panel. Finally, I put some of the darkest color onto an acrylic block and then added some details with the water brush. The next month I will be doing will be August and the flower is a poppy. I will be using the flower arrangement stamp set from Altenew and I will be using crisp dyes from Altenew as well. I will be using Coral Bliss Heartbeat Velvet, Buttercream Lava Rock, um, Frayed Leaf, Forest Glades, and Moss. I'm using clear blocks and the layering guide that comes on the back of the packaging. Next I will be doing November which is a chrysanthemum and I will be using My Favorite Things Beautiful Bloom Stamp Set and Altenew's Crisp Dye Ink in Jet Black to stamp the layers and I've masked off the layers so that I can do the blooms kind of behind each other. Then I took Stampin' Up Whisper White Craft. Uh, it's a pigment ink and I used a mini blending tool and did that kind of pounced it up and down all over the, the stamps. Then I took Kurataki Gansey Tambi watercolors and I will watercolor this in um, and while it was still wet I was able to move the green color out and mix it with the white pigment ink without making the paper really wet. The colors I used are 51, 52, 53, 54, and 58. And I did end up mixing some of those colors on an acrylic block to give me more variation of color. I didn't get the rest of it on camera, but I finished this one up by using Copic markers on the other flowers in the sea gray colors. October's flower is a Cosmos. I used Simon Says Stamp Cosmos background stamp to create the flower images at the top of this panel. Then I colored them in using Prismacolor color pencils, and I did not get the footage of most of it, so you get the coloring in of the centers of the flowers. I added in little brown and orange dots to the center of the flowers to add dimension. Next we will be doing December. And December's flower is a holly and I will be using Altenew's Bountiful Branch stamp set and using one of the ideas that came in the stamp set um, to get an idea of where I want to place the stamps. As I was creating this one, 
I thought I was recording when I wasn't recording and, and wasn't recording when I thought I was. Then I didn't like how it wasn't lined up, so I started over. I used Sweet Leaf, Just Green, Hunter Green, Espresso, Rouge, Crimson, and Velvet Altenew Crisp Dye inks. After I had stamped the images, I used some Nouveau Crystal Drops in clear and some Wink and Stella to add um, a little something to the panel. The last month I have to share will be September and I will be using Sizzix Flower Daisies number no. two XL die to create a stencil and I will be stenciling to create an aster flower. I created a half inch circle punch for the center of the flower and then I just blended in the Persian Blue Altenew Crisp Dye ink and then I rotated the stencil so that it was on the offset and then I took that out and added in the Fresh Lemon Crisp Dye ink to the center part and then added a little Forest Glade ink around the very edge. When I had those completed I added in details with a white and yellow gel pen. To create the stand for my calendar, I used a black cardstock and I cut two pieces that were 10 inches by six and a quarter inches and two that were seven inches by six and a quarter inches. Then I used some adhesive tape around all four edges and a couple down the center of the smaller pieces of cardstock, the ones that are six and a quarter by seven inches and then I applied those two pieces to one side of each of the 10 inch by six and a quarter inch pieces. Then I put adhesive on one of the sides that were, that was left, that didn't have two layers of cardstock on them. And then I stuck those two pieces together. Then I scored it at seven inches, eight and a half inches, and 10 inches. Then I folded it and realized with the weight of the calendar I needed to cut off a quarter inches off of the back side of the calendar. And then I took it and had it bound. To create the month words I used a Sizzix calendar word script die and uh, first I ran it through the Platinum 6 but then with all of the dies on there it didn't cut the center very well so I switched to uh, Gemini cutting machine. I cut them once in black and at least twice in white and stacked them, glued them together and glued them to the calendar. And here is a final look at all of the pages and then the finished calendar. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an awesome, fabulous, terrific day.